Prime Ministers meet in Perth. Anthony Albanese and Japan's Fumio Kishida strike a landmark defence deal. Details of agreements. Why Gina Reinhart is pulling her $15 million netball sponsorship. Emergency crews run off their feet by three separate freeway crashes overnight. The lucky escapes for drivers. UK's chaotic leadership race. Is Boris back on track to be the British PM? And the Halloween warning to parents after a boy is badly burned by an explosive prop. This is Nine News Perth with Natalia Cooper. Good evening. Perth has played host to Japan's Prime Minister, who has agreed to beef up an historic defence deal, seeing Japanese soldiers training on Australian soil. Anthony Albanese met with Fumio Kishida in a one-on-one -on -one at Kings Park today to discuss peace in the Indo-Pacific. Koalas, Eric and Harry with their own welcome to country. They're like big teddy bears. On hand to greet Fumio Kishida on his first visit to Australia as Japanese Prime Minister. <laughs> National defence was the key to this trip down under. The leaders meeting to strengthen a deal that dates back to 2007. Japanese soldiers will train with ADF troops in Australia's north. This landmark declaration sends a strong signal to the region of our strategic alignment. Anthony and I are deeply committed to nuclear disarmament. Kashida says right now Russia poses a global threat. The 77 years of history since the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, during which no nuclear weapons have been used, must not be ended. The agreement further includes cooperation over cyber security and disinformation. Also signed today, a critical minerals deal to shield the supply of components used to generate clean energy. Australia is Japan's number one supplier of energy. Fumio Kishida today saying that Western Australia has now become even more crucial to Japan as this war in Ukraine drags on. Perth is the place that symbolises uh, the history of Japan-Australia relationship. I had a meeting with uh, Prime Minister Kishida. I reiterated the fact that we will continue to be strong trading partners. I was also able to advocate for the recommencement of direct flights from Tokyo to Perth, which were suspended over the COVID period. The leaders also confirmed a space mission to one of Mars' moons, with Australia to act as a landing pad. Its planned probe will touch down in South Australia six years from now. Michael Genovese, Nine News. Netball Australia and Netball WA have been dealt a crushing financial blow after Gina Reinhart sensationally ended her company's $15 million sponsorship of the organisations. Sarah Smith, what does this mean for the sport? Natalia, this decision could put both netball bodies on the brink of collapse. Netball Australia lost more than $7 million during the pandemic and had to be bailed out by bank loans. Now it's lost this multi-million dollar deal. It says it's disappointed by the decision of Mrs Reinhardt's Hancock prospecting, adding this is a loss for the whole sport. This all started as a private grievance from one player over Hancock prospecting's record on the environment and treatment of First Nations Australians and snowballed into a national conversation about the ethics of accepting sponsorship from mining companies. Netball WA and the West Coast Fever are collateral damage in this mess. Their sponsorship has also been pulled, despite the saga originating around the national team. It's just, I think how it's all unfolded um, has been really disappointing. It, um, there's, and for me, looking in, to see my sport that I love um, and have been a part of for so long to be in this position and to have so much disjoint between um, the, the Netball Australia and the playing group. <clears throat> Cricket Australia and the Fremantle Dockers also had their sponsorships with Alinta and Woodside Energy pulled into focus this week. Mrs Reinhard took a swipe at the greater issue in a statement today, saying there are more targeted and genuine ways to progress social or political causes without virtue signalling. Natalia, Nepal Australia and Nepal WA have four months to find new sponsorship partners before the Reinhard money dries up. OK, Sarah, thank you. 
Three separate crashes caused traffic chaos on the freeway overnight. One car burst into flames, another smashed into trees, trapping the driver for hours. With the holiday season fast approaching, drivers are being reminded to take care on our roads. A Ford Falcon becomes a furnace on the freeway. The burning shell rocking Como with explosions just after 10.30 last night. Traffic passing close to the inferno before emergency crews arrived. But we just heard a big bang. Anyway, we come out over here and we just see a car engulfed in flames. Police say the vehicle had just collided with a trailer being towed by a Nissan Navara. The 20-year-old Falcon driver escaping the fiery crash without injury. We did see the driver get out. He jumped out. A little more than two hours later in Lakelands, another lucky escape. <laughs> A 23-year-old man was behind the wheel of this Ford Territory when police say it veered off the Quinana Freeway and crashed through several trees, trapping him in the wreckage for hours. Hold my hand so I know you're all right, okay? First responders called triple zero, flagged down motorists and ran to help in the dark of night. Somehow the driver walked away from this crash uninjured. When he was cut free, it's understood he hugged emergency crews and thanked them for saving him. And earlier in Kingsley, another crash causes commuter chaos. Police say a utility smashed into this stationary traffic management truck on the freeway after 8.30. The 40-year-old man behind the wheel taken to Royal Perth Hospital as a precaution. Authorities warning it's a timely reminder to be extra careful on our roads ahead of the holiday season. Kelly Williams, Nine News. Too many accused of a violent Hamilton Hill carjacking have been refused bail today. The court heard the 24-year-old man accused of stealing a woman's car yesterday had been out of prison for just eight days before the crime. It's alleged he pushed the woman in her 70s to the ground in her driveway, running over her leg as he drove off. Prosecutors say the man then picked up his 22-year-old co-accused from a nearby street before the pair dumped the Honda Civic in North Coogee. The police takedown of two suspects Suspects was caught on body cam a short time later. The woman is recovering from a broken leg and is in a stable condition at Fiona Stanley Hospital. Boris Johnson is picking up momentum in the race to be Britain's next Prime Minister again, despite not formally putting his hand up yet. There are only two days until the final contenders are known. Think you'll be Prime Minister next week? Rishi Sunak is still considered the man most likely to be Britain's next leader. But his former neighbour in Downing Street is seeing a surge in the betting markets. Rishi Sunak has been the favourite with William Hill since the start of this. And then suddenly Boris Johnson appears. And Boris Johnson's getting ever closer to Rishi Sunak in that race to be the new Conservative leader. Some cabinet members are siding with a Johnson comeback. About who could win the next election. That's obviously important for any political party at the time. So, you know, at the moment, I would lean towards Boris Johnson. Enthusiasm too in his West London electorate. I would welcome him back with open arms. We need a right person, a right leader in there. Boris has proven it before. A little less enthusiasm in Liz Truss's electorate. I think the Conservative Party are, will be destroying themselves. And some Tory MPs say they'd quit the party if Johnson is returned to power, recalling the mass resignations which saw him forced from office just three months ago. To go from the kamikaze budget under Liz Truss back to a man that his own party has declared is unfit for office is the most powerful argument you could possibly have for a general election. Contenders have until Monday to gather the support of at least 100 Tory MPs to be a candidate and Sunak has the most so far. Whoever does inherit the keys to 10 Downing Street has a huge job on their hands with a big economic mess to clean up. While the current Prime Minister prepares to clean out of Downing Street. In London, Brett McLeod, Nine News. Donald Trump has been formally served with a subpoena demanding he give evidence about the insurrection at the US Capitol. But the former president is unlikely to comply following the lead of his former advisor Steve Bannon, who today was sentenced to prison for his refusal. Donald Trump's former right-hand man given jail time but marching out of court. So I've got a great legal team and there'll be multiple areas of appeal. 
Steve Bannon will fight the four-month sentence handed to him for defying demands from the committee investigating the January 6 riots. The same committee is now making similar demands of the former president. Let's assume that he will uh, comply with his legal obligation in this case, although, as he showed on January 6th, he's not always done that. After a unanimous vote, Donald Trump has formally been subpoenaed for phone calls, messages, photos, videos and notes from the day of the insurrection at the Capitol. Details of who he contacted and what was said. Anything about extremist groups, the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers. Details of other phones or devices the president used. And the committee also wants him to testify before them. What would it say to the American people if he didn't testify, do you think? Well, a portion of them, they'd say, uh, that's great. And to a larger portion, I think they'd say that was a mistake. The date offered for Trump to take questions is six days after the midterm elections. And if Republicans take control of Congress, the committee would be scrapped. In key races, the former president is backing candidates and the current president is trying to find a new attack line. If Republicans get their way, the deficit is going to soar. The tax burden is going to fall on the middle class. It's mega, mega trickle down. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. A small plane has crashed into a barn, narrowly missing the attached apartment building in the US state of New Hampshire. The crash happened less than a mile from the airport. CCTV capturing the moment of impact. No one was in the building, uh, no one in the building was injured rather, but all those on the plane died. It's not yet clear how many people were on board. The Murray River has reached its highest level in more than 100 years, bursting its banks and inundating homes in Echuca after a heavy downpour. But the worst is yet to come, with forecasters predicting it'll hit its peak tomorrow. There's birds and boats. Even paddle boards. Why not? Nothing else to do. But this isn't the Murray River. It's Pakenham Street, Echuca. On the wrong side of the man made levee, it's going underwater fast. Some homes have turned into islands, but Eagle Baldwin's is already a swamp. For Christ's sake, mate, you can't stay like this. Even as the rain bared down, the 71 year old dug his heels in. Look at you, Eagle, you're knee deep. Uh, that's okay. You're all right. Yeah. I've been worse than this. Four generations of his family has lived in this home. There's no dry land for him or his sheep. His possessions are soaked, sewage is filling his bathtub, but he won't leave. I don't want anybody ripping me off. I put clean socks on about every two, two hours because I can't have a shower. Across the road, Dave Tomlins and his son are trapped by choice. River water lapping at their fence, but they have a plan. This is only rainwater. So I'm lucky enough I've kept all this out, but um, yeah, if we have to go to higher ground, we'll jump up there. Swags on roofs and tinnies in driveways, the new norm for dozens of nearby homes surrounded. The river is rising slowly, but residents are working quickly against it. I've been here since 73, so it is worse than the two floods I've seen. The levee was unable to hold the Murray back as it spilled over beneath the old bridge, seeping over walking tracks and creating Echuca's first waterfall. In Moama, cavities are appearing in concrete, riverside defence lines bolstered by holidaymakers. As soon as it gets in here, it's just going to be like a big drain. It'll be like filling a, a sink, really. Cabin owners dashing from Melbourne and Geelong this morning to protect their parks. What does this place mean to you? Uh, a lot. <laughs> A lot of good memories. We've got to do everything we can to come protect it. The water is one centimetre above what it was in 1993. It's only been higher three times in history. The current levees didn't exist then, so what tomorrow holds is unclear. The key thing with a major river system like the Murray River is the complexities of the many river systems that flow into it. For most, the mood is... Very anxious, nervous, just don't know what's around the corner. But for a few, there's no stopping them, simply going with the flow. All well, he wants to do is right? go fishing. Cheers, mate. Lana Murphy, Nine News.
A young boy has suffered serious burns in Perth's eastern suburbs after the ammo for a cap gun exploded in his hands as he was unwrapping it. Our consumer watchdog is warning families about the novelty items ahead of Halloween. Logan Dyson will spend Halloween in bandages, scarred for life a week after being scorched by a seemingly harmless toy that turned out to be a Halloween hazard, inflicting second-degree burns on the 11-year-old's hand. It just kept on popping and I'm like wondering what's happening because I can't really see. It was kind of like someone had just spilt like hot water all over you. Logan was unwrapping ring caps to load into the toy gun for his Halloween costume when the capsules exploded. It ran to my mum, she ran to me and we were both like, I was in pain and she was just in shock. The shock injury triggering a frantic dash to the emergency room. Heartbreaking. It was absolutely devastating to have to watch him go through that. Now sparking a warning from our consumer watchdog about the gunpowder filled toys. Do not expose them to heat of any kind. So make sure your children aren't using them near a fire, an open fire or near a heat source of any kind. With a reminder to be vigilant about other Halloween props powered by small button batteries. Make sure those batteries don't fall out because if a young child gets hold of those batteries and swallows them, it can be deadly. Consumer Protection says the manufacturer and retailer are cooperating with an investigation and if an error is found, could see these caps pulled from shelves across the country. The retailer has also voluntarily stopped selling the caps. While Logan Dyson is still nursing his burns, he's not letting the ordeal derail his Halloween plans. Ready to trick or treat, all guns blazing. Ezra Holt, Nine News. It's time now for a check of the weather with Kelly Haywood. Kel, a mild day here, but those in the north are experiencing a heatwave. Yeah, they are, Natalia. Parts of the Kimberley are right now under an extreme heatwave warning. You can see just here on the map just how hot it is getting in our north. Kununurra and Wyndham both today reaching 43 degrees. And both towns will not see a day under 42 degrees before next Saturday. Now, it was a much milder day here in the city and 10 degrees cooler, but a stark difference for those in the southwest today. Temperatures in the teens and showers from the southeast to the great southern region. Now don't forget to take a look at the skies tonight. Debris from Halley's Comet at the or Orionid meteor shower will pass over Perth and we could see up to four meteors a minute depending on where you are. Now today's nice weather will be short lived. There is rain on the way tomorrow with the chance of a thunderstorm for some. When and where it will hit I'll tell you a little later in the bulletin. Thank you Kel. I'll be keeping a look out for those meteors. We have more on the historic Perth meeting between Anthony Albanese and Japan's Prime Minister next and the government to hit companies who fail to protect customers from cyber attacks with massive fines. Perth rallies behind the women of Iran. Why a staggering number of small business owners are slashing their own wages and stopping super contributions and how you can protect yourself with cyber crime on the rise. The Albanese government is cracking down on companies hit by cyber attacks in the wake of major breaches at Optus and Medibank. Today's announcement of the multi-million dollar fines to be introduced came during the Prime Minister's historic meeting with the Japanese Prime Minister here in Perth. A warm embrace and a very Australian welcome for Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Perth. You are doing wonders for Australian tourism, Prime Minister. Also signing a joint declaration on security cooperation and a critical minerals partnership. Our affinity is in our common desire for a peaceful, prosperous, resilient and secure Indo-Pacific. Our special strategic partnership has risen to a new and higher level. The declaration renews a 2007 commitment. While it's not a military alliance, it will deliver the most intimate military cooperation ever between the two nations. It's a step up in the relationship at a critical point uh, when both Japan and Australia are facing a serious challenge from China. And while regional security is a top priority, so too is cyber security. The government announcing tougher multi-million dollar fines for repeated privacy breaches. Cracking down on companies who fail to protect customers after significant attacks on Optus and Medibank. The maximum fine at the moment is 2.2 million. And for a really big company, that's just a cost of doing business. Uh, it's something that they can safely ignore. 
The change is increasing the maximum penalty to $50 million or three times the value of any benefit obtained through the misuse of information or 30% of a company's turnover, whichever is higher. For Optus customers and Medibank customers, this is too little, too late. The new laws will give more power to the Information Commissioner and will be introduced to Parliament next week. Rhys D'Alessandro, Nine News. Hundreds have taken to Forest Chase today in solidarity with Iranian women following the in-custody death of Masa Amini. The 22-year-old died in the care of the country's morality police after being arrested for wearing unsuitable attire, sparking global condemnation. Protesters are demanding regime change. The Iranian government has denied any mistreatment. Italy's first female Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, has formed the country's first far-right government since Mussolini's fascist party during the Second World War. The leaders of both Maloney's coalition partners are fervent supporters of President Putin. From shops and gyms to cafes and pubs, small and medium-sized businesses are the engine room of our economy and part of our everyday lives. After struggling through the pandemic, they're now dealing with soaring costs and staff shortages and a new survey has revealed the lengths some are going to to survive. The swimwear business is booming in beach season, but Catherine Hampton fears she's in for a gloomy summer. I would say it is a constant worry. Like many retailers that struggled during the pandemic, she's now battling extra costs due to high and rising inflation. The cost of running a business is a challenge for us at the moment. Our, a lot of our expenses have increased, our fabric has increased, our shipping costs have increased. And her money worries are increasing too, because the Reserve Bank is hiking interest rates in a bid to cool the economy by getting consumers to spend less. That sort of gives me a little bit of anxiety because I, I need, um, you know, consumers to be spending. They should be worried about that. The Reserve Bank's trying to slow the Australian economy down. It will increasingly succeed in that. There is a bit of short-term pain, but it is for the long-term gain. A survey of 250 business decision makers supplied exclusively to Nine News shows 70% claim rising costs are the biggest impediment to running their business. Those prices will, without a doubt, be passed on. Um, it's the only lever that a small business genuinely has in the end. Nearly 50% of respondents say supply chain issues are a major worry and 30% are being crippled by staff shortages. Some are also taking pay cuts. One in four of them are cutting their own remuneration. We know a small percentage of them are also stopped paying their own superannuation contributions. More than 70% said the federal government is making it harder for them to run their business. Around 30% said it was making it easier. The government says it will be providing support to the sector in the budget. There's areas in the budget, you know, that we're doing work on, procurement, um, cyber is a real one where I think we can work to assist small business. Cyber is a growing concern for small and medium-sized businesses, with many alarmed by recent attacks, including those on Optus and Medibank. Around three quarters have become more worried about cyber security this year, and around two thirds are preparing to pay more for it. And that is another cost, another investment that they need to absorb. Fiona Willen, Nine News. And while data breaches are taking a financial toll on business, the potential toll on customers is huge as scammers look to take advantage of the personal data exposed. Cyber experts are urging everyone in the community to, pardon me, to be vigilant and educate themselves, warning this is just the beginning. Major companies have been under attack. I'm shocked it's taken so long um, for a major entity in Australia to, to actually sadly go through a, such a catastrophic event. Leaving the personal details of millions of Australians at risk. It's been a, a wake-up call, a wake-up call that has been long overdue. And as hackers look to capitalise on the breaches, everyone is being urged to be vigilant. A simple step, avoid clicking links sent via text and email. So even the, if it's the criminals who don't have the data subject of recent breaches, they will leverage that and they will take advantage of the heightened fears. Some small businesses receiving emails like this in the recent weeks, telling them they've been hacked, their data exposed, ordering them to pay up. Experts say if you receive communication like this, to seek advice and not engage. They don't have the data. It is a complete scam and a sham. And it's very important that 
business doesn't panic and start paying money to these crooks. Warning Australia needs to get cyber smart and fast. This is the beginning, it's not the end. Having said that, the sky is not falling. We can come together as a nation, as a community, to resist these threats if we get the fundamentals right. Meg Sides, Nine News. Every single day, three Australian children are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Next, the screening program aiming to improve early detection. A little girl's remarkable recovery after a freak crash. Inside America's new house of horrors, where teenage twins were allegedly held captive by their own mother. And a four-time Melbourne Cup winner loses his battle with MS. Legionella has been detected at the Mount Hospital. In a letter to patients today, hospital management said the bacteria was found in the water system. Patients have been told to not drink the tap water or use the shower while they thermally disinfect all of the hot water outlets. Legionella can cause a severe and potentially fatal form of pneumonia. Three children under the age of 16 are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in Australia every day. But a newborn screening program being trialled right now could detect the disease in more kids earlier. A normal day for three-year-old Ruby involves colouring in, games with mum, as well as four insulin shots to manage her type 1 diabetes. Yeah, you're the bravest girl I know, aren't you? Yeah. Six months ago, the toddler went off her food and was more tired than usual. But with half the family sick with COVID, her parents didn't seek treatment for a week. When we presented to hospital, she was in diabetic ketoacidosis, which is when your blood's turning acidic and your organs are starting to shut down. So really a life-threatening situation. Doctors say far too often the early signs of type 1 diabetes in children are missed or confused with other childhood ailments. One third with the condition not diagnosed until they end up in intensive care. Now a newborn screening program being trialled for the first time at two Sydney hospitals could lead to an early diagnosis. This testing, which is a simple uh, blood test taken at the same time as the routine heel prick, we're looking for genetic signs of children who will go on to get type 1 diabetes. We have three kids under the age of 16 diagnosed in Australia every day and 9 out of 10 kids have no family history. So for those families it just comes out of the blue. New mum Kirstine Bell led the development of the program. Her son Harry, the first to be tested three months ago. We will um, find out his results when he's about 11 months of age. Now, chances are that he won't develop type 1 diabetes, um, but if he is at risk, I want to know so that we can um, connect him with care, make sure our health professionals and we know what to look for. And there's potentially some therapies in the future that could help delay the onset. Any baby born at St George and the Royal Hospital for Women can be tested during the six-month trial, with hopes the screening will one day be available nationwide. Those at risk will have follow-up tests to monitor for very early signs of the condition. If we'd had that knowledge in the back of our minds that it was a possibility, we would have acted sooner. Ruby has an identical twin, so obviously because they share the same DNA, it's more likely that she will develop type 1 as well. Having that knowledge makes me feel better. Elizabeth Bryan, Nine News. Russian forces may be about to abandon the key southern city of Kherson as President Zelensky warns the soldiers are preparing to blow up a massive dam to flood the region as they retreat. Meanwhile, Belarus has declared it will not go to war with Ukraine despite the build-up of troops on its border. Pictures have emerged of inside the so-called House of Horrors where 16-year-old twins were held handcuffed and naked in a laundry by their mother. The teens escaped the house going door to door, their pleas for help captured on doorbell cameras. The teenager's mother and her boyfriend fled with five other children before being arrested. The grandfather of an 11-month-old injured after a car slammed into a Melbourne daycare says she's bruised but OK. While the family is shaken up, he says he's grateful no one was more seriously hurt. Bruises cover the body of baby Hanan. On her head and then there's one on her back. 
the 11-month-old nursing a purple patch the size of a golf ball, her lips swollen and sore. She's shaken up, but also the soreness that comes with it. That's the painful part, the soreness after the incident. And overall, she's doing quite well. She's a tough young little girl. Tough, an understatement. Cradled by her grandmother, this vision capturing the terrifying moment. A car ploughs through the front glass window of the Broadmeadows family daycare office. The driver mistaking the brake for the accelerator. It's a shock. It's, it's a disaster. You know, it's, it's something you aren't prepared for. The key question that was in my mind, are they safe? Are they alive? And the answer was, thank God, they are. But it could have been so much worse. In the office area, a staff member is also struck. Miraculously, she appears from the rubble, moving a broken door to escape. Two other employees were running late. Had they arrived on time, they too would have been in the path of the car. And now the cleanup begins. It's hoped the doors will reopen at Bright Beginnings in just a matter of weeks. Mohammed says there's tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage to his business, but the most important thing is no one was hurt. Miracle, thank God, it's in, it's in, it's in his hands. It's ordained to be like that, and, and we appreciate that. Shubha Krishnan, Nine News. As the jockeys today strived for a place in history at Mooney Valley, they were remembering a man who'd achieved just that. Four-time Melbourne Cup winning jockey Harry White losing his battle with MS after fighting the disease for 20 years. White was inducted into Racing's Hall of Fame in 2003. He was 78. Coming up soon, wildlife warriors. We go on the road with the vets rescuing animals from the East Coast flood emergency. And a baby blue whale makes for a particularly spectacular morning down south. Oh, that picture is hard to beat, but Paddy Sweeney is here with Sport and Paddy. Australia's World Cup defence is off to a shaky start. It sure is, Natalia. A first up belting from the Black Caps certainly wasn't part of their plans. The host humbled Australia, caught out by the Kiwis' class. Cummings' comeback, Animo puts on a Group 1 show at the Valley. And Simona's scandal, the former world number one suspended for doping. Australia's T20 World Cup defence is off to a shocking start, humiliated by 89 runs by New Zealand. The reigning champions were comprehensively beaten with both bat and ball and now are setting their sights on Sri Lanka here in Perth. Seeking revenge after heartbreak last World Cup, the Kiwi finishing with 92, New Zealand 3 for 200, Australia's run chase... A quick-fire half-century from Josh Phillippe has lifted WA to victory over Victoria in their Marsh one-day cup match. WA restricting the host to 6 for 244 from a reduced 36 overs. Phillippe making light work of the run chase, smashing 81 from just 50 balls. Phillippe goes whack over the fence for six. In front of the grandstand, goodness me, and it rolls out towards the Fitzroy Street traffic. Meanwhile, the Scorchers suffering their first loss of the WBBL season. The Thunder's Lauren Smith with 5 for 17. Picked out the fielder. They've caught well. The Sydney Thunder. This time it's Bakariwa on the boundary line. Back-to-back -back wickets as Smith picks up her 5 for. Sydney winning by 25 runs. Trainer James Cummings has added another chapter to his family's famed history, capturing his first Cox Plate with Animo. With star hoop James McDonald on board, the pre-race favourite delivered in spades. Four-time winner Glenn Boss delivered the prize plate as the Valley eagerly awaited a new champion. Animo away only fairly and Zaki began very fast on the inside. The hot favourite loomed large around the home turn, ensuring a sellout crowd wouldn't walk away empty-handed. Animo takes the lead from Zaki, alligator blood, I'm thunderstruck, but it's Animo clear, I'm thunderstruck late. Animo returned just $2.50 the win and like legendary grandfather Bart did five times over, now James Cummings had the Cox Plate in his keep. It's an unbelievable feeling, it's, it's uh, got me a little lost for words. Pipped at the post last year, today sweet redemption for Animo. Were there moments where you thought, gee this is going to be too hard? Yes, uh, yes it would... Uh, 
It would drive a lesser man to the bottle. Gun jockey James McDonald adding the weight for age classic to a bulging trophy cabinet which already holds a Melbourne Cup and Everest. My mum's been a little bit unwell so that will hopefully give her a bit of a kick in the belly and get going and I'm sure they'll be they'll be in tears I would have thought. And a bonus group one at the back of the card after lightning forced last night's Manicato stakes to be carried over. Streaking away Bella Nipitina and boy doesn't she deserve this Bella Nipitina falling. Hoop Craig Williams jumping for joy after Bella Nipitina saluted. Braden Ingram, Nine News. The Wildcats have suffered consecutive defeats following a second quarter onslaught from the Jack Jumpers. Perth's one point quarter time lead fast evaporating, Tasmania dropping 34 points for the quarter, landing 10 first half three pointers. Here's Doyle once more for the triple. Oh, three triples in a minute! The Jack Jumpers are marching all over the Wildcats. They're lighting it up. The Wildcats blown away, going down 103 to 72. In AFLW action, the Eagles have suffered their fifth straight defeat, going down to the Bulldogs by 32 points. West Coast falling behind early, failing to kick a goal in the first half. The Dogs far too strong, running all over the home side. Pat support, away to Brown. Tremendous goal. Well done to the Bulldogs. A depleted Dockers fighting off a tough Swans outfit to win by 14 points. Ebony Antonio hitting the scoreboard early in her return from injury. And skipper Hayley Miller finishing with 27 touches and a goal, but she did leave the field after a heavy knock. And finally tonight, former world number one Simona Halep says she feels betrayed after being suspended for doping. In news that has rocked the game, the two-time Grand Slam winner tested positive to a banned substance, which has been used to stimulate the production of red blood cells during September's US Open. Halep says that the idea of cheating never crossed her mind once and is totally against the values she's been educated with. The 31-year-old has promised to appeal but does face a four-year ban if found guilty. That is big news in the world of tennis, Natalia, and also in cricket. Australia absolutely dominated tonight. They fly to Perth tomorrow. Sri Lanka on Tuesday, Perth Stadium. Simply a must-win game now. OK, sounds good. Paddy, thank you. Next, an exclusive look at the mission to save the animals caught up in our flood crisis. And whale watchers treated to an absolute spectacle off Eagle Bay. And Kelly Haywood, today's sunshine was sadly short-lived. Oh, it was, Natalia. We've got a rainy few days ahead of us with around 11 millimetres expected in the gauges, even the chance of a thunderstorm about the hills tomorrow, but I'll have more on that up soon. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest headlines making news in Perth this evening. Perth has played host to Japan's Prime Minister, who's agreed to beef up an historic defence deal. Gina Reinhart's Hancock Prospecting has pulled its $15 million sponsorship deal with Netball Australia. And Legionella has been detected in the water system of the Mount Hospital. A letter today warning patients not to drink the tap water or use the shower while the hot water outlets are thermally disinfected. It's not just people affected by Victoria's flood emergency. Tens of thousands of animals have been caught up too. Thankfully, a dedicated team of wildlife volunteers is working round the clock to save as many as possible. Happy, healthy and bright-eyed, it's no wonder her name's Wiru. It means lovely in, in, in one of the many Aboriginal dialects in Australia. Maggie Davis has been a wildlife foster carer for close to a decade. You're a celebrity, Bob. You are, darling. And she's seen firsthand the crippling impact of Victoria's flood crisis. Knowing that the babies are drowning in pouches, it's very hard. But for those that do survive, there's help. Enter Wildlife Victoria, a 24-7 emergency volunteer-based service running all year, responding to calls from the public and monitoring for injured, orphaned or stranded animals like this wombat. Unfortunately, quite a lot of the time, um, these don't have particularly happy endings. Vets like Alistair and Ash keep an eye out for wildlife in distress and visit the volunteer carers for checkups. This Joey has only just been born. We've decided on some 
with medications. Yep. Maggie says her little ones don't ask for much, just kindness and a regular feeding time. A backyard doesn't hurt, of course. It is a long process caring for these joeys and getting them ready to return to the wild and their mob. It can take as long as two years, so that is plenty of time to get to know them. I think this one is pretty hungry. Especially in these floods, times like this are really hard, but when we get things to the end and we see them fly free or hop off into the distance, that's why we do what we do. And that's a payoff worth working for. Reid Butler, Nine News. The number of properties put up for sale increased slightly this week, but the appetite to buy didn't quite keep up. Nine's Property Watch can reveal 8,250 properties were listed for sale, while 888 were either sold or under offer. Our most popular suburb to buy in by a long shot was Baldivis, with 29 properties sold there, followed by Caranup, Como and Ellenbrook. At the very top of the market, one cashed up buyer snagged this Netherlands family home for a touch over $3.5 million and $2.56 million was the final sale price for this old property on a premium 1,000 square metres of land in Dalkeith. A far more affordable family home was snapped up in Clarkson for $345,000. A Perth-based drone photographer has got much, much more than he bargained for while on a break down south. Spotting this young blue whale just metres from the Eagle Bay coast this morning, Toby Nichols says this was just one of seven blue whales he and his mates sighted in the space of two hours, describing the morning spectacle as breathtaking. Oh, I just want to dive right in for a swim. And stay with us. Kelly Haywood is back with your full weather forecast next. Welcome back. Well, the clouds cleared for a beautiful spring Saturday afternoon. It wasn't the warmest, though, a top of just 23 degrees. That's after a nice 14 overnight. Taking a look to tomorrow, some onshore winds will push a few showers over the southwest of WA, including here in the city, while heatwave conditions will continue in the Kimberley region. 40 degree temperatures expected for some across the entire next week. Taking a look around the country now, 21 and a shower or two in Adelaide tomorrow Hobart rain and 13 degrees an afternoon shower ahead for Melbourne Canberra 21 degrees and a possible storm showers and 23 ahead in Sydney storms for Brisbane and 22 the top and a very hot 35 ahead in Darwin tomorrow back home in WA 43 ahead for Kununurra and 40 tomorrow in Marble Bar looking further south it'll be 21 and raining in Bunbury and 20 ahead for both Augusta and Albany now out on the waters tomorrow. Seas won't reach much above a metre but we still do have some beautiful days ahead of us for next week but a little bit of rain in there as well Natalia. Okay thanks for that Kel and that's nine news for this Saturday thanks for your company from the team good night.